Greetings and welcome, ladies and gents. I'm the Super Gamer, and Season 5 is finally on us. I said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm getting old. To start off a new amazing season, I figured why not take a look at a game that me and my friends have been playing a lot of recently, and that game is Paladins Champions of the Realm. With that said, Cue that Season 5 intro! Unlike the other shooters I've looked at in the past, Paladins has almost no story to look over. It might be because the game is still in development, or the fact that this game is trying to be a game first before anything else, which I'm glad it is, but it's still a little off-putting. The only story I've been able to find is a video from the Paladins YouTube channel, and even then there's not much to cover. The world was a war zone, champions called Paladins brought it to a golden age, disbanded after their victory, discovered a new magic power, milked the crap out of it, people were divided, a resistance was started, and it's basically just Captain America Civil War. But with wizards. <laughs> Overall, that's really the gist of it all. Nothing exciting, really. But hey, the story isn't what's important in an FPS, is it? No. It's the gameplay that's important. But what about those aesthetics? For a game that's still currently in development, I have to say, it looks really good. This looks a lot like something I would see in a fantasy book like Amulet or The Chronicles of Narnia. Though if I had to knock points off, I will say that the character design is a little bit unoriginal. Now, don't get me wrong, it still looks really good, but it does kind of look like some things I've seen before. Sha Lin looks like Aladdin with a bow, Beric looks like Torbjorn in the Engineer's clothing, Fernando is literally just Reinhardt with a flamethrower, Rover is Groot, Pip is Rocket Raccoon, you get the point. Despite all that, this game still looks great. But now it's time to get to the mixed bag that is the gameplay. The gameplay of Paladins is a team-based first-person shooter, similar to Team Fortress 2 and Overwatch. You got four different classes to choose from. Damage classes deal damage, obviously. Flank classes specialize in getting the drop on enemy players. Frontline classes specialize in being in direct conflict of the enemy team, as well as taking control points and pushing payloads. And support heroes, which give... well, support to their teammates. As of right now, the game only has three game modes, Siege, Onslaught, and Team Deathmatch. Siege requires you to take a control point and then push a payload to the end, with the first of four points winning. Onslaught is essentially King of the Hill, and the newest one, Team Deathmatch, is where both teams try to get 40 kills. Now, this sounds like your typical first-person shooter at first glance, but here's what separates it from the rest of the crowd. Paladins includes a card feature where you level up different cards which increase the abilities of the characters. Now, on paper, this sounds like a pretty neat idea, and if this was an MMO we were talking about, yeah, I would have to agree. But this card system has its fair share of problems. One, the cards you get from chests are completely randomly chosen. Sure, you can buy a chest for a specific champion, but even still, it's totally random what cards you'll get. Two, due to the, some recent changes in the latest updates for this game, in order to win, it's required of you to have high-level cards for the characters you choose, which makes this game end up becoming Star Wars Battlefront 2 all over again. Another problem with this game is its matchmaking system. It's very picky. For starters, all players of a single match are required to press a button to join a match in 20 seconds or less. And if, for whatever reason, that one player is not paying attention, the whole match is cancelled. Also, if you don't select your champion in a certain amount of time, the match gets cancelled. Why? That's just putting pressure on players who want to take their time with their champion choice. Finally, once a match starts, you cannot change your character, ever. So if you have a champion with cards that have low levels, while the enemy has high level cards, you're pretty much guaranteed to lose. Sure, you can spend credits on power-ups to help you counter the enemy team, but those can only help you so much. Overall, Paladins was a mixed bag for me. 
On one hand, I like the graphics, the different champions, and when I'm playing this game with friends, yeah, it could be a blast. But on the other hand, the card and matchmaking system are incredibly flawed. Thus, it makes it hard for me to recommend this game to anyone. I understand that this game is still in development, believe me, I do. But hi -Rez Studios has quite a lot of work to do if they're gonna keep me interested. I try keeping the comparisons to a minimum, but honestly, if you can't afford Overwatch, just play Team Fortress 2. Not only is it free, but also has gameplay to keep you hooked for a very long time. <coughs> Myself included. With that, I'm going to give Paladins a 3 out of 5. Until then, I'm the Super Gamer, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye!